An army of horses laden with sleigh bells was advancing through the deep forests towards me. As I listened more intently, I concluded that instead of the tramping of horses, it was distant thunder, and yet the morning was clear, calm, and beautiful. Some Pokagon, an old Potawatomi tribe leader, he is describing the wings of a flock of passenger pigeons which went extinct in 1914. The idea is that there is a kind of memory in nature. Each kind of thing has a collective memory. So take a squirrel living in New York now. That squirrel is being influenced by all past squirrels. Rupert Sheldrake, English Biologist. This is the story of two species. While they are similar in size, they may as well be worlds apart. One ended horribly at the hands of the human species. The other is thriving despite the invasion of people. Searching these two species explains why some survive and others join the growing list of those who have gone extinct. The passenger pigeon is remembered as the bird that went extinct. The passenger pigeon looked like the morning dove and resembled the old world turtle dove. The passenger pigeons had longer tails than the other two, along with the whole body being about 13 inches long. The male had a pink body and a bluish head. Wisconsin's own Aldo Leopold, who many consider to be the father of conservation, described the passenger pigeon flocks as a growing cloud that blotted out the sun as it advanced towards the city. Children screamed and ran for home. Horses bolted. A few people mumbled frightened words about the approach of the millennium, and several dropped to their knees and prayed. When the flock had passed over, two hours later, the town looked ghostly in the now bright sunlight that illuminated a world plaited with pigeon poop. The gray squirrel has lived in Wisconsin for thousands of years. The average squirrel is around 14 inches long and has very hard and long front teeth for chewing through wooden wires. These teeth have a growing power so when they break or get chipped, they can just grow back and are completely fine. These squirrels are very intelligent and use their back legs to leap very large expanses. When climbing through trees, the average squirrel can run out to the end of the tree and leap to the next. To this day, they infest our attics and gnaw away at our insulation and wires. They crawl and gnaw their way through the insulation to get to the final product of their home. They go through wires and wood to make a home in your home but the trees are still used by the same squirrels and have the same principles. These squirrels have learned to use our homes as a way to survive and expand their lifespan using our resources to benefit themselves. Passenger pigeons were hunted by both hunters as a resource and the predators that lived in the areas where they rested. The reason for having such large flocks was to reduce the individual risk of being eaten by some owls, wolves, and coyotes. The birds were loaded onto trains by the millions and shipped off to markets and stores. The fact of extinction sunk in around 1,000 birds. Once the passenger pigeons were reduced to the dwindling number, they were very vulnerable to the predators that once only killed a small percentage at a time. Then, the Supreme Court decided that wildlife belongs to all and restricted the limitations of farmers in the USA. During the time, the American bison was of more importance than the passenger pigeon, and the passenger pigeon was not given the attention that it required to survive. When dwindling, we eventually put out a bounty just to snuff the rest of the species out. The squirrel was able to survive as it was already using trees to make a home and survive. Our homes are just the newest model. These pigeons were used to living outside, but when we took that away and exterminated the forests that housed their nests, they died. The passenger pigeons died because we took away what they were used to having and they could not live in our homes or a zoo. These animals went from having more than 100 nests in a single tree to nothing in the range of 20 years. In conclusion, the environment that we created for ourselves had a positive and negative effect on two different species. Because we populated these animals' habitats, we killed off one and allowed the other to move forward and evolve and become an overall better creature.